Welcome to the Rewrite Your Story with Tasha Joe podcast, where we fearlessly dive into the vast realm of thoughts, ideas, and conversations that know no bounds. Buckle up and prepare for a wild ride as we venture into uncharted territories and explore the unexplored. On this journey, we leave no stone unturned and no topic untouched. From the profound to the absurd, from the mundane to the extraordinary, we delve into the depths of human curiosity and embrace the sheer unpredictability of life. This is the podcast where anything and everything takes center stage. Each episode is a thrilling adventure into the unknown as we bring you fascinating discussions, captivating stories, and mind-bending perspectives. As we embark on a quest for knowledge, enlightenment, and endless entertainment. Expect the unexpected, for here there are no boundaries and no limitations. Open your mind, expand your horizons, and get ready to be captivated by the infinite possibilities that await. So whether you're a seeker of knowledge, a lover of stories, or simply someone who craves the thrill of the unknown, this podcast is tailor-made just for you. Tune in, fasten your seatbelt, and prepare for a roller coaster ride through the vast expanse of human curiosity. Get ready to be amazed, enlightened, and entertained because on this podcast, there's only one rule. There are no rules. Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back. On today's episode, I have one of my best friends, Connie Babers. Love her last name too. <laughs> Want to say hi? Hi, guys. So Connie is an entrepreneur. She owns a business called Bombshell Beauty. And go ahead and tell people what you do exactly. Yeah. So I'm an esthetician. I've been an esthetician since 2001. So for a hundred years, um, and I pretty much work, pretty much have worked for myself the whole time. Um, I think five years ago I opened Bombshell Beauty. Before that, I um, leased out of a salon for about ten years, and then I leased out of a different salon for a few years. Um, but yeah, so I am in Silverdale. I do a lot of body waxing. A lot of facials. Amazing facials. <laughs> <laughs> I do light therapy treatment. I do teeth whitening. Um, I carry a very high-end medical-grade skincare line called Jan Marini Skin Research. It is incredible. I've used it forever. I'm obsessed. Yeah, it's really, really good. So, yeah, I love my clients. I love what I do. It's yeah, And it's why, like, how did you get into doing what you do? So, um, growing up. I kind of never really had an idea of what I wanted to be. Maybe a veterinarian, maybe an actress. That's so funny, me too. Yeah. <laughs> My dad still says it to this day. You should have been a veterinarian or an actress. <laughs> but um, I always um, loved doing hair and I loved makeup. I had older sisters. And so they were teenagers when I was really young and makeup was huge in the 80s and big oh, yeah. hair and stuff. And so... I, I was really good at hair. I always did my friend's hair. I always colored my hair. And so I always thought I would do hair. Um, but when it came time for me to figure out what I was going to do and go to school, I I looked into the hair program and they had an aesthetics program at the um, tech school that I lived by. And it just seemed really appealing to me for some reason. And I just kind of... Um, decided to go for that. The program was a little bit shorter and I wanted to kind of get on with it. And I thought, well, oh, so you did actually do that program. I did not the hair, oh. just aesthetics oh, because okay. aesthetics was shorter than hair. Gotcha. And I thought, well, if I don't love aesthetics, I'll, I'll just and do then you hair ended up after. Loving yeah, it. I ended up loving it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Yeah. yeah. And how long have you been doing that now? Since 2001. Okay, and definitely stay tuned for the end of the episode because Connie has an incredible offer that she's mm -hmm. going to be giving to the first five people that reach out. So we will touch on that in the end. Um, but yeah, today's episode, Connie and I are just chilling on my couch, drinking some tea at Saturday night because that's what our Saturday nights uh, <laughs> look like. Um, but we don't really have a specific topic. We just kind of wanted to act as if we're just sitting here kind of having conversation and I mean a little bit on friendships and what were the other yeah things just I think like maybe some of the things that we have in common are uh, good yeah. topics okay um, self-image yes friendships and how friendships have changed since 
um, starting the journey of healing mm -hmm. and growth and spirituality, whatever that looks like for people. Not everybody kind of goes down that path, but yeah. for the people like us that have, how it has changed friendships. It's changed yeah, so much. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, um, let's start there with friendships. Yeah, well, um, do you remember how we met? No, no. <laughs> so I remember um, meeting you a couple times, like throughout the years at a house party. We have like mutual friends and acquaintances. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember you asking me about skincare one time and thinking, oh, she's really nice. I really like her. It's all good. <laughs> And then, you know, fast forward um, several years, um, I ran into you at our um, shared tattoo artist's shop. You were leaving an appointment and I was coming in for an appointment. At and we, Yeah. And we were both like, oh my God, how are you? Oh my gosh. I and do I was like, remember hey, how that are now. You? Are you still married? What's going on? And you're like, um, nope, not married. Moving to San Diego with my new love. That's when and we you, reconnected. Yes, oh. totally. And you told me about your shop. And I was like, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. I would love to come see it. And you're like, well, move to San Diego, blah, blah, blah. So I don't remember exactly, like, if you, you gave me your that, card. You saying that, I do remember mm -hmm. that now. Or if we oh, had just okay. started, like, messaging each other or something. I don't know. But that was the start of it for sure. I do remember and it that just now. kind of, yeah, it like took off. So did we um, stay in touch? Like, I mean, I was only in San Diego for three months. Yeah. But, or was it when I got back? We I think it was, you know, mostly when you got back. But I think I then like started following you on Instagram. And okay. so I was kind of keeping up with what you were doing in San Diego. And yeah, I don't know. I just started coming into Mystic and we just started messaging. So it was like when I got back just, from San Diego mm -hmm, that totally we became connected. close. Because mm -hmm. right when we did start hanging out, we've been inseparable yeah, since. For and sure. that was, oh my gosh, how many years ago was that? San Had Diego? I, did I break my ankle? When, do you remember? Um, or did I have that accident after I we were broke out? mine. I broke my <laughs> fibula. So I went to San Diego with a cast on. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that was 2020. Okay. So maybe I had... I can't remember. You hadn't yet. You okay. were after me, remember? Yeah. It was for sure. like a year later or something. Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's crazy. So funny. I know, but it's been amazing. Yes. Me and Connie have so much fun. Yeah. She is a hoot. She cracks me up <laughs> yeah. all the time. We have a lot in common. Yeah. I mean, we, there we have differences for sure. I'm older. Um, you know, I have a kid, <laughs> but we just connect on yeah. a, a really awesome human level. Like and and our interests. We, we have similar style. Sisters. We, you know, we yeah. are both heavily tattooed. We love decor yeah. and love healing, healing. and becoming better yes. versions yeah. of ourselves. We love, like, and we're both like really kind, decent human yeah. beings. And yeah. we value friendship and the people in our lives. And we value family and and we do Unfortunately, have a lot of the same. we also have in common that we have people in our lives that don't yes. <laughs> like we do anyway. You yes. know what I mean? I'm sure they do in their own way. But yeah, it can be really challenging to be such a loving, open person and to have people in your life that are not necessarily that way. Absolutely. Let's touch on that, you know, as far as um, people either coming into our lives or actually people who were in our lives that we had to remove. Do you want to touch on like your relationship with your sister? Yeah, I mean, that one's pretty big. Yeah, it's a big one. My sister and I were close for my whole life. She's 10 years older than me. And our relationship just started to fracture and, you know, I'm sure she has her reasons and I have mine and maybe we would agree on some and disagree yeah. on some, but our relationship just became really unhealthy and unhappy for both of us. In, Isn't that in when I came ways. into your life and started, you know, I mean, saying, hey, this is toxic? Yeah, and... for sure. Because we would have these fights and we never used to have a relationship like that. So, um. I mean, I, I certainly don't blame, you know, myself or her. I just yeah. think that for whatever reason, the pals that were on, they just were not jiving and we were really clashing and it was just That's becoming, when you started setting boundaries yeah. and not saying like, uh, I'm going to be allowed to yeah, be treated this because way. Because I, I loved her mm -hmm. deeply. And so when I would feel hurt by her, I would let it go. And I'm sure she was doing the same for me on some level, yeah. you know, but we just maybe didn't communicate the same, so we didn't communicate well. Yeah. So I don't really know what was going on in her head, and maybe she doesn't know what was going on in mine. But you have it, to do what you have to yeah, do for you. It got to the point where I, I literally had to block her 
Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think I've ever blocked anyone in my life, like ever. Not, it was not really an ex-boyfriend, toxic. Yeah. Not, like nobody. I mean, you were crying all, all the, the time, time and just it's hurt. Very, and very sad. You it's, had to protect your energy. Yeah, I just couldn't do it anymore. I just had to kind of grieve the loss of that relationship, which was hard. But I, I'm sure we're both better for it now. And well, I think, think about how much more peace you have in your life yeah. since then. Oh, for sure. And that is one thing we say all the time. You know, toxic is toxic. It doesn't matter if it's family or whoever it is. Yeah. You have to do what you got to do to, you know, keep your peace. Yeah. And it can take a while to to get there and to figure that out. And oh, for sure. Of course, you know, nobody wants that. Yeah, it's not easy. Especially when it's family. Yeah, you just have to do it sometimes. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can figure it out and and still have a relationship with a person, but it's a different relationship. But in this case, it had to be cut off. Yeah. There was kind of no way to... Setting boundaries is huge. Very It was really hard. I think the first time I ever did that. And and I miss her terribly, Mm -hmm. you know, but... I and I was angry for a long time and I, I probably still have a little bit but more than that I'm just trying to find peace in it and you know I I wish her well and her family well but and, you're also in a place too where you did what you had to do to yeah. you know keep your peace but at the same time like when she gets to that point and chooses to reach out because she's done the work that she needs to do you would welcome her with open arms you know if she's you know, yeah. healed from that. Yeah, and... I think so. I think if we could have um, um, like productive, honest, kind conversation, yeah, then I for sure would be. And you know, I think accountability and acknowledgement is huge. I, I think I can do that. I'm, yeah, I know that oh, about absolutely. myself. But you know, I don't know. That is like the number one thing um, when it comes to anybody in my life. I want to be able to have a conversation and everything should be able to be talked out. Yeah. Nobody should be raising their voices or, you know, getting angry and yelling or any of that. Like everything we should be able to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the best way, but I I mean, I'm pretty fiery and I can get heated, so I think that You're human. Yeah, I'm human <laughs> and my voice can elevate, but it's I mean, I'm not yelling yeah. and freaking out. I can certainly get to that point. Yeah. I can react, but I'm usually provoked. Yeah. Um, but I still have to take, you know, <laughs> control of my own reactions. Oh, yeah. I mean, but... think of how far we've came just in these last couple of years. Yeah. Like, do we still have work to do? Absolutely. Sure. You know, we're constantly growing every day, but we choose to do that work and show up for ourselves. Yeah, I'm way less reactive. I used to be extremely reactive. I'm passionate about stuff. Yeah, oh, me too. (laughs) I, you know, I don't know. I I got opinions. I got things to say just like other people do. And I think it's fine for them to say them too, you know, like. It comes down to responding versus reacting though and how you say it. For sure. I was pretty reactive. (laughs) I'm a little more chill. I can still get that way, but I'm. Yeah. And I used to be that way too. I mean, I remember back with my ex-husband, I've talked about this in previous episodes. I remember that feeling of just getting so angry and screaming. And that's when I finally decided like, I don't have to feel this way anymore. I don't have, I'm the one doing this to myself. And that was a game changer for me. And, you know, it took a long time and practicing and noticing it anytime it would start to come up. But oh my God, my life is so much more peaceful. Right. I don't fight with anybody. I know. Even if they wanted to. I just, you know, are you done? Well, that's <laughs> where we differ. Yeah, no, and that's okay. <laughs> no, but you know, that totally is. It's like I said, way less, but yeah. I, I, I will fight someone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll cut a bitch. Yeah, I will. <laughs> In a heartbeat. Oh my gosh. Um. So what about like, you know, we're talking about friendships, how they've changed. Um. Have you lost a lot of friends since you kind of started going down this path? So I wouldn't say a lot. Okay. I'm, I'm friends with most of the same people that I've had for years. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I think those friendships that are still really solid, those people in my life, mostly women, I do have some male friends that I'm, you know, I'm still close to. But most of my friends are are women. Um, they are working on themselves too, mm-hmm. you know, in their own way. But you know, here and there or whatever, yeah. they are aware of themselves, yeah. and and they're 
they're good friends. Yeah. And I mean, even the the friendships that have, you know, fractured and mm-hmm. are not the same, there's still some love there. Oh, you absolutely. Know? But it, it's definitely different. Mm-hmm. Um, but something must have been fractured to begin with, maybe, you know, for it to for a friendship to completely end. Friendships are two way streets, yeah, you know. For sure. Like both people need to put in the work yeah. and Well, and there yeah. has to be a level of like like some kind of unknowing, you know, connection or yeah. something. It just kind of has to be there. I feel like trust you just know. Or, yeah, you something. know, like with us, yes. you know, we it's, just instantly. Yes, like it's all good. There's yeah. no judgment. There's no. We are here like, to lift each other yeah, up. Yeah, there's no expectations. No. There's no like hurt feelings. There's no, you know. Nothing, I, you, yeah. I've had friendships in the past where I'm like, I'd get my feelings hurt. Oh, I didn't get invited I remember out, that. Or, when we started hanging out, you yeah, would get really hurt yeah. by things that your other friends invited, were doing. Or mm-hmm. they didn't call me or something. And Yeah, you've came so yeah, far. Yeah, I don't really, I'm not bothered by that stuff anymore. But, but I also think that sometimes it's relevant. Like sometimes, you know, you're getting your feelings hurt because you are being left out. Yeah. And that doesn't feel very good. Yeah. But you can, you know, just look at it differently. Okay, well, I maybe I wasn't being left out on purpose. <laughs> you or know communicating what I mean? that to them, yeah, letting it, them know how you feel. Right. You know? Well, I'm, you know. Yeah. I mean, sometimes. sometimes Depending on who should, and yeah, what the and situation. Why, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I do. I like think about it. Okay, well, was I really left out or was it just some random moment where it just worked out that way. That's so good totally that fine. you say that because I um, was going to touch on that where is that a fact or is that a story? Is that mm-hmm. true? Louise Hayes, you know, always would say that in her book that anytime those thoughts come through because we torture ourselves, we create these stories. And yeah. so the way you just uh, worded that, like you had to kind of walk yourself through it, right. you know, like, right. hmm, was this really right. the case or it, is this trauma that, you know? Totally. Yeah. 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 Mostly. It's mostly the story. Yeah. But right? sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Think of how many stories you just want we have. one-on-one with a certain friend mm-hmm. and you don't want the other friend to be there just for whatever reason. It's not because you don't love them or don't want to hang out with them, but you just need someone on and you just time communicate with your other that. friend. Yeah. Yeah. And the people who, you know, what what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I totally just lost. But you know, like your real friends will totally understand that. Absolutely. And they'll get it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I can say anything to my closest girlfriends. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I call on them at any moment if I need to. Like I yeah. know I can. Yeah. I just I know who I can call. Yeah. And you know, Mostly you can call like anybody. Anyone can show up in an emergency. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I I can call bunch of people at one in the morning yeah and be like I you know fell and hit my head I need yeah. help or or something I'm lost whatever it is I ran out of gas I don't freaking <laughs> none of those things have happened except for falling and hitting my head my <laughs> Monica has saved me a couple times oh my gosh but but it's know, so nice having your small tight yes, group, you know pe- like your and, people people and knowing the people that it doesn't have to be an emergency for you to call yeah. them like I just need you like yeah. I just need a friend today or I'm I'm going through this thing. I just need to get it out. I just need to vent. And I, I need your opinion and advice, whether I take it or not. Yeah, or whether you want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You well, know that. Yeah, you... <laughs> I still need to. I just yeah. still need to be with my friend and have have some friend time. But yeah, those are those are important relationships. Friendships are so huge. I mean, I've I used to be that person that you know had a very large gr- group of friends mm-hmm. and was the social butterfly and. But and I used to hate being alone. Mm-hmm. I just always had to be busy doing stuff, hanging out with people. And oh my gosh, I just I've changed. My life has changed so much because I like my small group. I like spending time by myself or, you know, just with one girlfriend or two, you know, mm-hmm. just I love that now. Oh. Yeah. Good. I know. I just want to be with my friends that I can fully be myself with. There's zero judgment. We're just, it's just good. Mm-hmm. It's not weird. I can look like shit. I can look hot. It yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> like, 
it's all love. Yeah. You know? and, and that's it, how it I'm is with all of us. With like we excited. are just, yeah. Yeah. We're it's always easy. excited. When we it's see each fun. Other. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we always have the best conversations. Yeah. So good. Connie's always cracking, you know, jokes or saying some smart ass, like, you know. She's a sassy one. <laughs> yeah. I love that about you. Yeah. I got a mouth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But then another thing too, you know, you are such a bright light, but one thing I really admire about you is you stand up for what you believe in. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you know the people, we can be in a group of people and if somebody says something yeah. that is um just not okay, right. you will be the first to be like, "Hey, that's not cool." Yeah. You know, so many people just nod and go along with the group yeah. like, yeah, yeah. But you're like, um, and I'm like that, too. Like, right. I don't just agree with people. I have always been outspoken where, you know, I speak my truth. Yeah. And a sure. lot of people don't like that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Like, I think it's important and I don't think it's for everybody. I don't expect everyone. Maybe that's why to, we vibe so well, because yeah, we are so right? outspoken. Yeah. We just we're honest. Well, and I've been um, like persecuted for it you know yeah. what I mean and honestly my sister was that was a big problem I yeah. would oh I was shamed for it too yeah mm -hmm. I would you know stand up for what I believe is right and what I believe most people should think is right and yeah. and even having conversations hard conversations about uncomfortable topics and things um, like yeah we got in big fights over that stuff and it, mm -hmm. it really sucked it was it would have been nice to have a conversation but I mean I have to look at myself too you know if I'm so heated that someone feels like they can't have a conversation again I know that's bullshit <laughs> that's total <laughs> bullshit like yeah. you can be heated too I can be heated. that's okay mm -hmm. we can still have a conversation about it and we can totally disagree at the end of the conversation that's fine yeah but we can still have a conversation about it but yeah. if you're looking at me like I'm the most evil person in the world because I have this opinion and view about it and I'm talking about it and I'm passionate about it, then that that red sucks flag for you. Like yeah. you suck. Like not yeah. me. Yeah. I, I, I don't even feel like I have anybody like that in my life. You know, I have slowly over time just been very mindful about who I give my energy to yeah. and who I want to receive energy from. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, I mean, I, I'm i not as mouthy as I have been because sometimes it, it can be exhausting, even though I, I mostly will say something in certain situations. But of course, there's times where I just need to protect myself and mm -hmm. I, or I just don't have it in me that day. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just going to walk away from this particular situation, you know, and sometimes I feel like maybe I can reach somebody. Oh, yeah. You know, like we can have this uncomfortable conversation because maybe... You know, you'll hear something that I have to say, and it might change your view a little bit. Absolutely. You, you know, are always I'm willing to planting take that seeds yeah. wherever you go, and whether they want to receive the information yeah. or not, you still planted that seed. Totally. And they get to choose what they yeah. do with it. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm, fine. I'm that person that brings my tarot cards and everything, my backpack to anywhere I go, even not knowing anybody. And I have had people say, oh, my God, you're bringing those in. And I, yeah, hell yeah, I am. Bust them out, and I at least reached three people who didn't even know anything about it, and that was the start of their spiritual journey. That's one example, so you know? Awesome. Like, it's just... Yeah, if it's not for you, it's not for you. That's fine. Yeah. But, like, don't poo-poo Yeah, it, you don't, know? don't God. <laughs> I know. Pee. Oh, my gosh. Um, another topic that, you know, earlier we talked about wanting to bring up tonight was self-image. Oh, because yeah. that, that is in something well. we also have in common that we both work very hard yeah, at, you know, but hard. there's some deep rooted trauma for there sure. for both this of us. This is what I would say that we share. We, I, I believe, and I've said this before, I believe that every single human being is aesthetically beautiful. Yeah. The outside of every walking, living creature it's beautiful. is beautiful beautiful 100 percent. no one is ugly in yeah. fact that word is quite awful to speak on someone's appearance right that what, word how, in general what they're just... wearing what they look like how they do their hair whatever S saying someone is ugly aesthetically is is really an awful thing to do yeah now if you're not attracted to someone 
that's fine. It doesn't mean that they're ugly. It means that you're not attracted to them and that's okay. Yeah. It also doesn't mean that they're unattractive. Yeah. Somebody else may be attracted to them. You're not attracted to them. That's yeah. fine. It's chemistry. It's attraction. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But to say that they're ugly is, is a really shitty thing to do. I truly believe that ugly comes from within. What is the definition of ugly in the dictionary? I don't know. We should look it up. Yeah, now right? I want to look it up. <laughs> Anyways, but you so were going. Curious. Yeah, so like it just comes from within. If you have an ugly spirit, mm -hmm. if you, you know, are just not a nice person, you do really mean things. Yeah. Then that that is maybe ugly. But yeah. I just don't think that it should ever be spoken on aesthetically. And with that being said, I think that um society mm -hmm. has their own shit that they put on people um but i think that you and i are probably both considered fairly attractive people i think so i mean we get told that all the time you know I mean? like, <laughs> yeah um i mean i think you more than me but oh my god whatever i mean that's yeah that's we're not even getting into shit yeah my own bullshit but um we both like some Trauma. switch flipped when we were very very young mm -hmm. that told us that we were ugly or unattractive aesthetically not like, good on enough. the outside though like yeah that that has to be prevalent yeah it has to be on the whether it's there was you know something about your face that someone spoke about when you were little or your body type that someone spoke about your hair. I don't know. I know for me, you were my, told. I was literally told that I was ugly as a little girl, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. My mom was with a man who was extremely racist. My dad is black and he just always called me a monkey. He always said he could see my brain through my nose. He would say, oh, you're so ugly. Wow. And we just kind of, my mom kind of laughed it off. I think she probably was in a tough spot and maybe didn't want to make it seem serious and who knows, I, whatever. But it really fucked me up. Yeah. <laughs> and I try really, really hard to just kind of flip that switch back. I know for a fact that I am not aesthetically ugly. Yeah. Because number one, I don't believe that for anybody. Yeah. But it's it's like near impossible for me to like fully like see it and believe it. I just think sometimes in formidable years, things happen and you mm -hmm. can, you can get better. You can do a lot of healing. You can do a lot of work. You can, you can like flip that switch a little mm -hmm. bit, maybe even halfway. I'd love to meet someone who's flipped that switch all the way up. I think it's impossible, <laughs> but Oh, but nothing's it, impossible. Well, I think you learn how to <laughs> yes. live with it. You know the you know the truth. You know the you reality. know the you root know of it's the not problem. True. Yeah, you know the problem. But you can. I just think you have to do your best with it. Yeah, I don't think it completely goes away. I really don't. I I think well, it depends I, I on think the you're severity. right. I think it'll always be there, yeah, but always, it's just it won't affect you. It's not as bad. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not as hard. You're not as hard on yourself. Yeah. All those things, but it's it sucks. It's hard. It sucks it's to a be lot this fucking work. hot ass right? bitch walking <laughs> walking through life feeling ugly. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is that? Oh yeah, I'm that is like, some bullshit. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, we are hot as fuck, <laughs> right? I mean, yes. What the hell? <laughs> it's like we can say that all we want, though, but we don't believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, it, it's weird. It, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's I know a people lot of that work. feel really confident and feel really pretty and feel like yeah. oh I look at those women I'm like God I'm so, so envious so, yes, I'm like so I lucky. I want love that. that it's so attractive yeah bottle it up but it. also too you know I mean I think I've noticed a couple examples to where again going back to like we create these stories I don't know the root of my problem because I don't remember my yeah, childhood right. I mean I can you know name examples of things but I just don't know where it initially like came from yeah um I know I was compared to my sister a lot mm -hmm. and um she was always told she was smart or artistic and so I think that I have a lot of not feeling good enough and yeah. my wanting to seek that validation to like prove myself yeah but I mean, maybe that's what it is for you that it just kind of seeps into the aesthetic part you know what maybe. I mean like but it's it's mostly internal. Yeah. But it just 
that's kind of how it shows up for you sometimes. Totally. You know what I mean? It's- and there's so much to it too, but like for an example as creating a story. So I used to, and this is awful, but this is the truth. Like I will always speak my truth. Um, I would always have this fear of being in love with a man. And I cannot believe I'm like airing this, but (laughs) here here we go. I mean, I've talked to close friends about it and whatnot, but here we go. So I have always had this, or I always had this fear of being in love with a man or falling in love with somebody. And then once they saw me naked, they wouldn't be attracted to me anymore. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of that comes from my trauma from growing up, but also because, you know, I had two breast reductions. Right. And so I had scars and being married and everything, but then you go into the dating world. Mm-hmm. And so that was very um, intimidating and yeah. scary. But thankfully, I, was working on my healing and starting to like know who the fuck I am and be like, I'm a fucking blessing. I know what I bring to the table. But still, even though I know that deep down and there were a couple different times or even like the summertime, you know, when I didn't feel my best, like going in a swimsuit in front of certain guys that, you know, the way guys would talk about women back in high school and whatnot. And I remember going one time, I think I did tell you this, remember, went out on the dock and I was in my swimsuit and there was a guy there. I'm not going to say names or anything on here, but then after that, he was just blowing me up and telling me how that day Mm -hmm. he was so attracted to me. And that's when he started. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God. And I've been so afraid. Yeah. And you think just of, did it. You just were rocking your shit. You're yeah. like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to not. But all the times I didn't. Right. All the times I would, you know, isolate or sure. I just think about how many opportunities I missed out on because I was so worried what other people would think about right. me. It's sad. I mean, it is. Sad. And why I was like, I'm not fucking living my life like that it? anymore. Like, why is it that some people have that and other people can put anything oh where you have sydney my best my other best friend you know sid who runs around naked and i'm like and i love it and her mom did too where my mom did not you know she was very critical on her body and so it's like you know we see what we see i mean i'm definitely like a a naked person my mom was like that and so i'm super like comfortable being naked i'm naked at so home you're a comfortable lot. being naked, I'm but... naked by like by myself a lot like oh, okay. i don't like what i see but i just deal with it anyway because i like being naked i don't i wouldn't necessarily okay. do that in front of other people if i felt more comfortable with the way my body looked yeah i would probably get naked in front of anyone like yeah. i just don't care oh that's my like it's the body it's a human body. <laughs> go out check my mail and hey man, same, man. <laughs> like The same thing with like, you know, feeling like everybody is aesthetically beautiful. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way with body. You know, it's the same. The face is the body. Like bodies are just, they're bodies. It's all good. Oh, I have really learned to love my body and rock it. I definitely struggle with that. I'm not happy with my body, but it, you know, I'm trying to. Fake it till you make it. And then you do do. end up believing it. Yeah. Like you've came so far. I've came so far. I mean, I. We we, keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. It's just all those times, again, do, I've said it so many times, do the things that scare you the most. Those scary times that I actually did it, it wasn't what I thought. It was the complete opposite. So that's just, you know, do more uncomfortable things to realize that these stories, you know, they don't exist. Other people look at us and they're like, you're beautiful, where We've created this story, but it's Ew. yeah. So, yeah. Oh gosh, so no! I'm yes, done with all word. that. I mean, like I I'm the worst. Nope, that you is in the like, past. Let it go. Mm-hmm. You just have to kind of release. You it have to feel it like, and release is, it. Yeah, just I know I'm gonna still have this place in me that's a little uncomfortable yeah. and feels a little insecure, and I think you have to find peace with that. Like, be okay with it a little bit. You don't have to say, I can't have this feeling at Mm -hmm. all. It has to completely go away. That's too much pressure. No. How about I'm going to be friends with you, you shit feeling. Yeah. We're going to be pals and we're going to fucking rock this together. Well, like Christina and I talked about naming it, whether it's, you know, money or that negative um, voice in your head, you know, like Christina was like, sit down, Becky, like anytime (laughs) it comes through. So that's what we need to do. And this reminds me too. It's like, 
we have all this knowledge and the things that we've learned, but there's so many things that I've even given advice on like that. Yeah. But yet I still have not came up with a name. Right. You know, we're human and we're just always sure. doing all the things. But what are our names? Let's literally accountability partners right yeah. now. So anytime that we hear each other saying that, we're going to remind each other. So what's the first name that comes to mind right when I... Like a person's name? Like a... like a Just, yeah, a name. Any name. I'm not sure why I thought Linda. Maybe it's that Linda? like... <laughs> I think that's that what kid. I said <laughs> on the episode with Christina really? was Linda, Linda and she said yeah. Becky. Yeah. I don't know. Um, okay, what's mine going to be? Um, oh, gosh. What initially came to mind, which is really freaking weird, was Bobby. I don't oh. know why Bobby popped in my head. Bobby but I don't really is. like that. That's not Whatever, like, hey, bitch. Bobby. Uh, huh? Bobby bitch. Bobby bitch. Okay, I like that. <laughs> so now you just spiced it up. So Bobby bitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> but seriously, you know, having an accountability partner for yeah. things is just I thrive off having somebody that I know yeah. can it's put like, some pep in my step. It's like partnership. Yeah. You know, it's good. Having mm -hmm. a partner is good. Whatever that partnership is, a romantic relationship, a, yeah. um, you know, a guardian like your parent or, you know, your child or whatever. It's your friendship, your neighbor, mm -hmm. you know, your coworker. It's Just whatever partnership that you can that you can work together. Yes. And and having and those couple solid people in your yeah. life that you know, like I know without a doubt I could call you no matter what, and you'd yeah, be there. For sure. And you know that I would be there for you. Yep. It's just not a lot of people, some people don't, don't have those have people, at all. but they I, have to seek it. It you know? breaks my heart for people that don't have anyone. Yeah. Just you know, people that are struggling with no family, no friends, people who are homeless. Reach out. Mystic are, Movement has, yeah. oh man, we will all be there. We may not be in the same state or anything, but Shit, we'll get on a phone call, Zoom right? call. Yeah. We will do message. whatever to help. Yeah. yeah. I'll send, send someone a positive message mm -hmm. anytime. Just a little encouragement. That's another thing, complimenting people yeah, more. I right? want to get better about that. So I think nice. these things all the time, but I have been around people where wherever I go, I forget who I was with. No matter where I went, they were constantly complimenting people. I'm yeah. like, I love that. I love it too. I do That's it so often. Awesome. I often do find myself saying oh gosh I love your skirt or oh I love your hair oh so, yeah you're one of those you know people I mean? too for yeah, sure definitely and then yeah. sometimes I do think to myself that I haven't done it a lot or something I need to mm -hmm. do it more but yeah I like to do that it's nice but that's the thing too we're always like oh I could be better at this oh I should do more of this right you know how can we just be better be to in service to right. other people you know yeah yeah I also um being like really friendly and complimentary like that has been used against me and like been you know I've been told that I'm too flirty or I'm who were those people like, that told well, you that okay <laughs> we just talked answers. about this in our episode yeah exactly <laughs> you know but it's like just because I'm you know telling somebody you know why because be you're vibrating higher yeah. and they're trying to pull you down yeah we just talked about that in the episode um with Derek you know he's like the more successful you get you're gonna have haters but the more haters you have you're obviously doing something right yeah. you know and we are surrounded by such uplifting people constantly we all root each other yeah. on and just I can walk in and be like god damn I'm hot right and anybody I hang out with would not be like oh my god she's cocky she's right. conceited they'd be like fuck yeah you yeah. are Hell get yeah. it girl Hell yeah those are the type of people you need well, yeah for sure yeah I, I dated this guy years ago that I mean, I think he literally said to me, like, I don't want you being nice to people. Like, I want you to be mean. Oh, like, gosh. if you're in line at the bar waiting to get a drink and you're talking to the guy in front of you or behind you and you compliment, compliment him or say, I'm, he's like, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't oh. want you talking to anybody. I'm like, you fucking lost your mind. Yeah. That relationship didn't work out. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> but, I would not you know, I that. just thought that was so crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? There's a lot of jealous people, insecure. Nuts. Yeah. Like, no, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to be that. I just think, you know, jealousy in relationships too. 
or control. Yeah. It's, oh my gosh, like why are you even going to be with somebody if you don't trust them? Yeah. What is the point? That to me is just be single or, you know, be healed yeah. and then be with your person, trust them. Well, I think that sometimes people can work through that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if, if people can heal together, you know, maybe because sometimes people don't know things. But about when you start themselves. taking it out on the other person For by sure. acting like yeah. that, you know, that's no, not you have okay. to address the situation and then, you know, kind of correct it or whatever, you know, you have to yeah. figure it out. You can't keep doing the same shitty behavior to yeah. your person. You know what I mean? Like I, cheating isn't a deal breaker for me. Yeah. Like if I'm, if I was with somebody and I'm not saying I would like it, Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying that that is not the most important thing to me. I am more open in that area. I, someone who- How could, you resolve conflict. I could separate sex and relationship. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't do that. Yeah. I'm fine with that, but I don't like lying. No. I don't like, you know, just mean, you know, saying oh, yeah. mean things, stuff like that really hurts me. So I, I would probably be able to get through mm -hmm. some cheating drama with my partner. If my partner was like, you know, really remorseful and- I'm really sorry and I'm I'm never going to do that again and we worked on it and it didn't happen again. And great. Done. Yeah, We're I done think here. it depends on the person, the situation, yeah, for the sure. I mean there's so many different factors sure. that come into play. Yeah. Um because I could see that too, but it's like you don't know until you just you're there. It's so true. And, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it depends on the person too. Maybe I would be okay with that with one person but not the other. You know what I mean? Right? Like, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And that's the thing too with um you know, my past relationships where there was that year where it was like one after another and people would say, you know, oh, you can't hold a relationship because I have boundaries yeah. and I know what I'm willing to accept. I won't tolerate right. that kind of behavior. You well, know? I think that's a really rude thing to say. Right. You can't hold a it relationship. Just, yes, just, I can. Yeah. Like, oh, I have my. friendships. I have family members I you know what I, mean? I won't like, settle I, I refuse yeah. to settle not that I can't hold one it's, yeah this relationship isn't right for me so or these guys you know tell or put on this picture of who they are and then I would trust them and down the road then the jealousy and the insecurities mm -hmm. would start coming in and I'm like oh no 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 I told you right from the get-go like hey I have just as many guy friends as I do you know the yeah. whole all of it right. and but again, no regrets. Yeah. I know they came into my life for a reason. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what else mm -hmm. we got? We've mm -hmm. touched on friendships, self-image. Mm -hmm. um, what was another thing that we were going to talk about? Oh, another thing that we have in common, albeit, you know, kind of different, but we both... Um, love people who are transgender oh that's a good one yeah i was thinking this was going to be a whole different episode yeah, and it but can that's... be and maybe it should be and we can get some other people you know to yeah have so let's just kind of this, like but yeah bring it up but can... then we'll do yeah. a full episode mm -hmm. so you know just yeah lightly our our difference is that i have a child who is transgender and i had a brother who passed in yeah, yeah 2018 yeah and you know not everybody shares that experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's And so when people make their snarky comments, and comments and, and oh yeah, that's where me and really, Connie yeah, step in. Yeah. And don't if you don't know what you're talking about, just don't yeah. even don't like, yeah. Well, and uh, if you're not gonna be kind, I just I'm really kind of oh, I could go on. I know, I, I know. Could go I mean, hey, let's on touch on, on it a little I bit. Just, I'll just say this. When people say well, I just don't understand it. And so I just, you know, I, I think that is just. They weren't born it, with this. They chose I, this. I, I, all of that, I just. Yeah. I could just snap someone's I, neck over it. I yeah. just, it's so ridiculous. They're just uneducated. <laughs> I, But you don't even have to be educated. I was yeah. never educated on, you know, the LGBTQ community. Yeah. I was or not never even educated, edu I don't, but. Or knowing, I didn't know anything. Yeah. I, I'm not bisexual, which is really like, you know, common to even mm -hmm. experiment or whatever. I've never been, I've always known exactly yeah. what my gender is, what my sexuality is. I've always been very comfortable and firm in that, never wavered. But I've also 
always known and felt like like there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, for I, sure. And there is nothing I wrong with it. I wasn't taught that. any I just I just knew. I'm like, I don't you know, I don't understand math. Yeah. But I'm not walking around fucking right? poo with <laughs> math people. Like I don't understand yeah. a lot of things or but it's not for me to understand. I don't I don't even say that. Yeah. Like it just is. Yeah. It's not my walk through life, but it's normal for it to be someone else's walk through life. I mean, I'm like to judge people on their Especially gender. Especially people and you don't their, even know. I just, like, any, like it's insane to mm-hmm. me. Like you've got to be kidding me. There are like this is just. Yeah. It, and I don't know. It's But it's human nature. It's just another part. Goes of, along with any other with, topic too. With, how uh, people the are. The ugliness yes. of how the spirit is and how people are. That, so think about that. Whoever's listening, you know, really think about that when you're in a group, don't be that person that's just, yeah, or, you know, going along with it. Yeah. Watch what you're saying yeah. and really think about it or, you know, either educate yourself on that topic or mm-hmm. not even educate but, yeah, for but, certain no, I mean, topics. But yeah, sure. But just learn more. Yeah, exactly. Like mm-hmm. open your mind, be kind, open your heart. Yeah. If that was your child, if that was your sibling, if that was your parent your yeah. best friend your name anyone that you care about even if you don't care you know a stranger a kind human being a, a just a person yeah just be nice i mean i lost my brother yeah just be and nice to people people aren't nice people yeah. judge and judge. stop judging yeah stop, stop judging. it just stop mm-hmm. it's not for you to figure out it's not for you to be confused by someone's pronouns or who cares yeah who you can cares? ask if you want to like do you have or don't ask yeah but just let them be just happy whatever. let them be don't be rude and don't be confused and don't be questioning people and don't be weird and don't be shit quit yeah. being shit quit being just shit just quit being <laughs> shit you know yes uh that's Man. yeah I, I mean yeah we we'll could definitely, definitely i think that stuff for sure and that's something i've been wanting to do too is on certain topics um really go in depth about that topic, but bring in different people and yeah. kind of do clips of different stories yeah. to get different perspectives. Yeah, and, that's you a know, great idea. So I think we that's going to be one of the upcoming ones yeah. for sure. Love it. And we are always looking for feedback on what topics you want us to talk about, um, any questions you have. So definitely, you know, let us know because we're loving doing these episodes. They're all completely different. And yeah, we just want to bring you a good, um, I don't even know, good shit. Yeah, yeah. Good juju. <laughs> good juju. Yeah, I good do, vibes. I want to say about friendship, like, um, I think that when people start a journey or the process of working on themselves, <laughs> healing, you know, growing, just accountability, all the things, there are going to be people in your life most likely that mm-hmm. just don't want you to grow. Yeah. They they just don't have the, There will be those. They people. don't have the ability to allow you to grow. And they'll they try like, and pull you down. They yeah. just they have have known you the way you've been your whole life and that's too comfortable for them. And even if your changes are like the best changes ever, sometimes there's growing pains. So Mm -hmm. you might go through a period where you're not really yourself. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty normal. It's kind of like a roller coaster while you're figuring it out, there's highs and lows. And so for those people that can't allow you to grow and move through it, those are the people that are probably going to fall off and maybe you'll be able to reconnect. But maybe you won't, and you just and that's have to. Okay. Find, it's okay. You just have to find. I've peace had with both. That. And just remember, yeah. it's it's not you. You didn't do anything wrong. You were just trying to figure it out, and at least you're trying to do that. Yeah. Because they couldn't accept that, and, e- and they're even, used to a different version of exactly. you. Exactly, and so it just doesn't work for them or fit for them anymore. It's okay. It's it's not about you. You know, it's when you really them. start setting boundaries with people, they don't like it. Yeah. And I have experienced that multiple times because yeah. like Connie said, yeah, they're used to treating you a certain yeah. way, you being, being a different a certain, version. Mm-hmm. And but it's so necessary for your growth. For sure. And if someone can come back to you and be like, hey, I just didn't, you know, you were just going through stuff mm-hmm. and I didn't know how to handle it at the time. And 
but I see it now and I'm sorry for my part or whatever. It doesn't even have to be an apology, but whatever. Yeah. Who knows what now, but it's like, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing good yeah. and, and I love you. That would be nice. I mean, I think I would like to do that for someone if I had that experience mm-hmm. where I kind of watched my friend go through some hard times and these ups and downs and maybe at the time I didn't understand them. Yeah. And so I maybe judged it or maybe wasn't happy with it. So I, you know, I kind of maybe didn't hang out with them, but then, you know, later saw, oh, okay. Yeah. They were really fucking going through some shit. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could give that person some grace. Sorry. I couldn't at the time, but I certainly can now because I've grown to like, you know, yeah. Just, and I always say too, like, just do what you need to do to, make yourself happy every single day and just keep raising your vibration every single day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What else do we got? I know. know. Um, Let's see here. Okay. So what was, we're going to just kind of random question. We're going to do a couple questions. It's just going to be random. I haven't done this yet, but I'll ask you a question. Then you ask me a question. So what was the highlight of your 2023? Ooh. <laughs> mm, let me think. Thinking about let all the see. things you did. Oh, Lord. God. That's why I actually keep a I, notepad in my phone yeah. and I jot them down because I like at the end of the year, I like to be able to look back and be like, oh, wow, I did a lot. Or, oh, okay, I'm going to step up my game a little bit for this year. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I really (laughs) or it doesn't even have to be a highlight or like what was like one of your favorite memories or just something that comes to mind I have a really bad memory I blame menopause on everything right now (laughs) it's true I mean I I went to Sacramento to see one of my best friends from high school that's always a a really high point for me Mm. At the time, it didn't feel like it was good, but Mm -hmm. I was kind of forced to move out of my salon Mm. at very short notice, Um, and I had to find a a place quickly to move my business, and like I said at the time, it felt really jarring and stressful Mm -hmm. and unexpected. It's a it's a huge hit financially, emotionally, blah, 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 but I know from being friends with you you've helped me <laughs> tremendously every time i'm area. like this is a blessing yes i mean what do, what do you say redirection is, is uh rejection, rejection is, is redirection. redirection yeah yeah because totally. she got told to be out within 30, 30 days, days and that's the first thing i hit her with i was like oh my god this is, is re- great i know it just feel um, like it but i'm so excited for you i was like <laughs> i fucking hate you <laughs> i was oh just a god. mess i was I so stressed out and which you know that's that's you know relevant too. But you just need a minute to and process. look at now how beautiful. Yeah, I mean your space is. I'm still you know adjusting, adjusting. But I know that it's it happened for a reason. Yeah, and and I'm glad it did. Yeah, and also knowing that you know I was leasing from some you know not so great people. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to be out of there. I don't want to be giving someone oh, my yeah. rent money every month. That sucks. And, and that know, would do that to you. Yeah. You were a loyal renter for five years five there. Five years. I was a, you know. And to just right then and there. tenant. I'd, I because somebody wanted the space to, to be take lovely. over. Yeah, they just didn't want to renew my lease because somebody else wanted the empty space beside me and my tiny space to go with it. And yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. But I'm here. <laughs> this is a nice space. <laughs> but I have an active business and you're really yeah. you're talking. I just, it was. I Everything just, always happens for you. And yeah, you, exactly. Yeah. I was really bent about it for a long time. And I'm like, Psh, good yeah. riddance. Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my place in Silverdale is super, super cute. I love it. It's like almost finished. You know, you got to do a little fine touches here and there. Oh, but it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's super cute. Love it. So gorgeous. So, okay, question for me. Ooh, what you got? Um, Anything. Ooh. This is, ooh, this is kind of scary. <laughs> it can be whatever. And then how long? If you could pick one person to sit down and have a conversation with, dead or alive, 
who would it be? Who? Damn. Damn, girl. Damn. That one's good. Okay, mm-hmm. well, I mean, what kind of conversation? Any conversation. It does, that's So it could be question. either like just... Any person, dead or alive, if you could pick one person right now to just sit and talk to who, whoever. I don't I mean, people, I don't I mean, Gala Darling comes to mind probably just because there you go. we were just sitting here talking about her book. That's not who I would, if I was to really think about it, you know, but yeah. she's the first one. That kind okay. of popped in. Yeah. yeah she was kind of on your mind. Yeah. And, yeah. and I That's and awesome. thinking about, yeah, she's obviously doing it right. You know, mm-hmm. she's killing it. And yeah, she knows how manifestation and law of attraction work. And yeah. yeah. That's probably, awesome. Yeah. That's a really good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. One more each. Let's see. Um. Oh, man. This is kind of. I know. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. hard being put on the spot. Let's see. Hmm. What are five things? That's too many. Oh, no, it's not. Right. That really bring five things in your life that really bring you joy. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not in exact order. I'm no, just no, pick the just things. five things that make you really happy, yes. bring you joy. Um, um, my dog Pearl, duh. Oh my God, Pearl. Oh my God. Yeah, Actually, I knew Pearl say that. is number one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just get real. Oh my God. Gosh. I love that bitch. Yeah, she is so oh, cute. She's an angel. <laughs> she's just, oh, Pearl. Yeah. I love her so much. She um, does love okay. her so much. <laughs> um, for sure, my most cherished friendships. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so much joy. Like, my friends are extremely important to yeah. me. They just always have been. Ever since I was little, I value my friendships. Couldn't picture I, life without no, it. No, yeah. I love my friends. Yeah. I just love, love, love them. I want us to all live together I on know. a big piece of property. Oh my gosh. And Could have you imagine? Little <laughs> houses and have like a, a meeting pond or a, a meeting circle where we've got like, you know, lounge chairs around a oh big fire goodness. pit. And maybe there's a no guys allowed, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, I just it would be like a dream come true. Mm-hmm. We can have our, you know, private spaces. We're gonna we have come that. Together. Let's manifest it. it. We're, we'll have it'll be like our amazing. vacation, our summer, right? Where just, we always go and meet oh, up, and yeah, heaven. I love that. Okay, so that's two. Um, my dad. I love my dad. Hold on. Um, he just brings me joy, just who he is as a person and his walk in life, walk through life. I just, yeah, he, thinking about, about him brings me joy. Right. Seeing That's the whole brings point. Me joy. What yeah, I just thinking about even if I'm joy. not that happy with him. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Still brings he's you joy. just, yeah, he's good stuff. Um, and I'm only asking this because I've asked quite a few people. Mm-hmm. And it's really sad because a lot of people can't think of anything. And really? I'm like, yeah. Oh, that and sad. that's where it's like, you need to seek that and search yeah. for the things that light you up. Yeah. For Invite sure. more of that into your life. Yeah. Um, my kid, you know, I only mm-hmm. have, I have one kid who will be 26 this year. 26. Which is crazy. Wow. I know it's nuts. Um, but yeah, a lot of joy. It's really challenged me as a person to be raising this human who has a lot of challenges and difficulties Mm -hmm. and a different walk through life but it's we were meant to be if there was a mom of the year award it would definitely go to you (laughs) the best the best compliment ever um and uh, my business for sure yeah yeah i mean my clients my I'm sure you build my some services. pretty amazing I'm, like yeah, connections. I love with, my clients. They're yeah. my friends. I, some of my clients have been with me since the beginning, since really? 2001. I've wow. seen people have their babies, go oh. through marriages, and all move and hear about move their and struggles, and, everything. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, I am their therapist. They are often mine. Yeah, yeah. I've always said that about like, um, um. Why can't I think of it? I'm um, hair people, um, hairstylists. Stylist, yeah. yeah. Hairstylists yeah, and yeah. estheticians. Yeah, like the same, yeah. therapists. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, I love I mean, I love all my time with you, but yeah, coming in and just laying there and having mm-hmm. you 
do my face and make my skin feel good yeah. and just good conversation, good company. Like, yeah. Yeah. I definitely, it brings me a lot of joy. I've been doing it for this long for a reason. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would have moved on to something else if it just wasn't Oh, a yeah. Good and you're fit so good at or, what you do too. Yeah. I just had a knack for it from the beginning. I think that's what it's all about too is, you know, being in service to yeah. people. Yeah. You know, helping other people in any way. That's what we do. For we sure. help other people be better versions, feel better about themselves, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. I picked my five. Okay. Last okay. Question, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, if you were going to die tomorrow and you had millions of dollars that you had to give to a charity, what charity would it be? Oh, man. And we were just talking about this on the episode last really? night, too. Yeah, you're touching on so many That's things crazy. that we talked about how we want to get more involved with mm -hmm. different charities. I've talked to you about this, you know, yeah. just not knowing which ones. Um, probably something related for mental illness. Yeah. Because Good. losing my brother yeah. to that and Good. just it's out there everywhere. People need help. Yeah. They need resources. They need help. Yeah. yeah. For sure. That's a great I mean, one. that would be one that's of many. Great. I know, but, but that, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And Super autism. Important. Yeah. You know, my niece is autistic. Yeah. And so those are the two things um, that would probably yeah. be. Yeah. Good. Super important. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think we are coming up here on an hour. Is there wow. any? I know, right? It just flies by Oop, as I kick over my tea. <laughs> is there any last minute things you want to leave us with? Or I mean... Just, love yourself. Yeah, love yourself. Remember Be kind. that you are beautiful. Important. Yeah. Worthy. Yeah, all the things. Beautiful, smart. You rock. <laughs> yeah. Go get them. Yeah. You're killing it. One day at a time. Yeah. Okay, so we mentioned in the beginning of the episode there was a special offer. So, Connie, you want to go ahead and tell our listeners what that is? Yeah, so the first five people that contact me can get 50% off of any facial treatment. Oh, hell yeah. And that's... Am I included in that? No, <laughs> oh, I'll give you a New real client. special deal, honey. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can contact me through text or phone call. You can check my Instagram page, which is Bombshell by Connie. I recently changed it. I think it was Bombshell Beauty by Connie, but I think I shortened it to Bombshell by Connie. We'll put it in the yeah. show notes below. Um, and my phone number is 360-271-6431. Like I said, you can call or text and 50% off of any facial treatment. And you can combine the facial treatments if you want to. So you can get a mini facial, a signature facial, you can add an LED light treatment to your facial. Oh, red light therapy. Yeah. yeah. So you can get whatever kind of facial combination treatment you want to and get half off of that. So the first five people who reach out. Yeah. And is there an expiration date or just the first five people? Yeah, just the first five yeah, people. Yeah, it'll go quick. And so yeah, definitely exactly. reach out and say your phone number one more time. It's 360-271-6431. And I'm in Silverdale. Um, it's pretty easy to find. I'm off of Ridgetop. Uh, so yeah well thank you so much Connie for coming on you will be back for a upcoming episode on you want me, girl. yes definitely and definitely book those facials because she is incredible <laughs> love oh. you so much love you more okay we will see you all soon bye